Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive neurodegenerative disease. The hallmark finding is the loss of dopamine cells in the substantia nigra, which leads to the classic motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Bradykinesia is the slowness and smallness of movement. This video shows the slowness and decreased amplitude with hand opening and closing. Another classic symptom is rigidity, or stiffness that's felt with passive motion of joints by an examiner. Imagine trying to move a joint like bending your elbow and feeling resistance as if the muscles are somewhat locked or resisting the movement. The third classic motor symptom is resting tremor, which can be seen in this patient's hands as he tries to relax. First-line therapies focus on replacing the dopamine that is lost. This can be done by administering exogenous levodopa, which is a precursor to dopamine. Levodopa is always administered with a dopa decarboxylase inhibitor, such as carbidopa, which allows more levodopa to be absorbed. Levodopa is swallowed and then absorbed in the small intestine. It moves through peripheral tissues and crosses the blood-brain barrier. After entering the brain, levodopa is broken down into dopamine and then released like the endogenous neurotransmitter. Another first-line therapy is dopamine agonists. Just like how dopamine released into the synapse activates dopamine receptors, these agonists mimic dopamine when they turn on the dopamine receptor. These two classes of drugs are initially very effective for treating the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. However, as patients enter the middle stages, three to five years after diagnosis, they become less effective. Let's take a closer look at this. Here's a graph showing the effectiveness of levodopa over time from early stage to advanced stage Parkinson's disease with the dopamine level on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Initially, levodopa is very effective. After taking levodopa, the level of dopamine will increase until it's at the level needed to help the patient feel like they can get up and move around. Throughout the night, the medications wear off, and by morning, the level of dopamine is at the lowest. The patient takes the next dose, and the medication starts working right away. So patients spend most of their time in the on state, which is when their medications are working. However, as patients enter the middle and advanced stages of the disease and endogenous dopamine cells are lost, they spend more time in the off state when their medications aren't working. Patients begin to notice that their medications wear off and their symptoms return before the next dose. It also takes time for the medications to kick in. When patients alternate between the on and the off states, this phenomenon is called motor fluctuations. In middle and advanced stages, individuals may also experience dyskinesia as the dopamine levels peak in the blood. Dyskinesia refers to involuntary movements, including head bobbing, swaying in the trunk, and fidgeting in the extremities. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.